Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video on iStarly TV. Today we're continuing our discussion of and our thoughts of a lot of the information that was revealed in Wednesday's Nintendo Direct. That was on June 5th. That was a couple days ago, and I know that this is a little bit late, but I was really busy yesterday. Um, but anyways, I, I decided to break it into a couple more videos to kind of talk about some of the main points that they discussed in those videos and really some of the I think bigger changes coming to po Pokemon Sword and Shield. It seems like these games are going to be pretty different than a lot of what we've seen while probably still mostly staying true to kind of like the Pokemon formula but it does look like they've changed up a couple things and the things I'm going to talk about in this video in particular are probably some of the things I'm most excited for f in this game. Uh, in particular, this video is going into a lot of detail about the wild area that they talked about. Now, it seems as though this wild area is a very expansive, almost kind of open world type of area in the games. It seems like a very vast, large area, and it says that it connect it's connected by several different towns and cities, or rather it connects several different towns and cities. So what it sounds like in this game, and this isn't confirmed or denied at any point so far, but it does seem like this is kind of taking the place of what we know as routes in Pokemon games or routes, however you pronounce it. You know, every Pokemon game we've played before has had routes. I call them routes. So like, you know, the first generation games had Route 1, Route 2, Route 3, obviously, etc, etc, right? Every game has had routes in Pokemon. This one, it seems like the wild area is basically the routes, the in-between area uh, between all of the major towns and cities. But it seems like it's just a huge, expansive, open area. And it seems like it's not quite as linear as previous games, which is pretty amazing. That is something that I am extremely excited for. You know, you think to something like Breath of the Wild, uh, which is also on Nintendo Switch, which has just a, a huge, huge open world where you can pretty much go anywhere that you can see. That seems like that's partly the case here, and I really hope so. An open world Pokemon game would be just fantastic. Now, of course, I don't think that this world would be quite as open as Breath of the Wild. Like, you know, in this picture here, you, you see this huge tower in the distance. I don't think you can climb on top of the tower, right? But but I imagine that at least the the this big open kind of uh, nature area is probably accessible. Um, so, of course, in the wild area, that is where you encounter wild Pokemon, right? That is where you'll be catching Pokemon. And... It is awesome if it's more like an open world. Um, it does seem like if that's the case, there might be a little bit less organization of what Pokemon you can find where. Like, for example, you know, if you if you want to know where you can catch Zigzagoon in Ruby and Sapphire, you can look it up. And, it, you know, you can go on the internet, go on Cerebi.net, which is one of my favorite Pokemon websites, and search, like, Zigzagoon locations in Ruby and Sapphire, and it'll tell you every single route where Zigzagoon appears, right? Now, in these games, if the if the wild area is just a, a huge open area that connects all the towns and cities, and it's not divided by routes, it might be a little bit more difficult to kind of pinpoint where you can find any given Pokemon. Now, I ultimately, I, I see how that could be a problem for some people, but at the end of the day, I think that's kind of a cool thing, right? One of the big selling points for the wild area that they talked about in their Nintendo, or in their Pokemon Direct, was that the Pokemon that you can encounter in the wild area will change depending on the time of day, depending on the weather, and depending on the location of the wild area. So obviously, you know, there's going to be more grassy or more hilly areas, and certain Pokemon that are more accustomed to those environments will be uh, appearing there, whereas the more, uh, you know, water areas and, and the colder areas will also probably have different Pokemon, right? So that's cool too, and, and maybe it depends on like, okay, maybe you're just roaming around the game and you're like, oh, it's raining now, so I want to go to the wild area because I want to find like a, a whooper or something or a, or a lantern or something like that. Like I really want a specific Pokemon that only appears when it rains. And I think that that could be... In some ways, yes, maybe more frustrating because, you know, maybe 
you if you're looking for one specific Pokemon and you it's hard to find it, you know, of course that could be frustrating. But at the same time, I think that could add a level of like discovery and mystery to the games because you're thinking, okay, oh look, it's raining now. I want to see what Pokemon I can catch while it's raining. So I'm going to go out and you'll encounter a wild Pokemon. Maybe you'll encounter a Pokemon that you've never even heard of before. Or maybe you'll catch a Pokemon from one of the older games that you really, really like, but that you just didn't know you could catch in Sword and Shield, right? So I think that there's a lot of potential for the wild area to be something really unique in, in a Pokemon game and actually really awesome as well. Now, something else that they also mentioned is that, and, and this is another huge one that really contributes to kind of the open world nature of the wild area, which is that you can control the camera. So you can actually have full control of the camera while your character is moving about the wild area. I'm not sure they 100% confirmed this, but they did say that you have control of the camera when you're in the wild area. So it seems like you only have control of the camera when you're in the wild area and when you're in actual towns and cities, uh, you might not have full control of the camera, but that's fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. Having a fully controlled camera, even in the wild area alone, again, because it looks so open, that just sounds amazing to me. I, I'm, I just can't stress how excited I am for these games. They did say that you can use the camera to kind of search for Pokemon and items in the wild area. So of course we know that Pokemon can change depending on the time and the weather and all that. So I wonder if items can also change. Like maybe if you're in one specific location in the wild area and you're looking around, maybe you notice there's a Pokeball right there or like an Ultra Ball or something or a rare Pokeball like a, like a Fast Ball, I don't know. Um, and then maybe later on, in your journey, you go back to that same area and maybe there's a different item there or maybe there's no more items there and, and you find a different item in another location that wasn't there before, right? So just there's so much potential for like a lot of random uh, generated objects, Pokemon and items and stuff. And I think, again, that that just seems awesome in a Pokemon game. Just that sense of discovery, that sense of replayability, always being able to go back to a, any given location and finding something you never saw before, you know, finding something new. That's obviously one of the biggest uh, selling points of Pokemon in general. So the next big thing I wanted to talk about that has to do with the wild area and capturing Pokemon is that it actually seems like random encounters might have been done away with here. They have said, this is from the actual Pokemon website, that uh, battles with Pokemon, with wild Pokemon, occur when you run into Pokemon that you can see wandering around. So obviously in the trailer we saw a lot of shots of really cool looking things where you could see wild Pokemon just wandering around, like you saw Rhydon, you know, trudging through the desert. You saw little hippo, hippopotas uh, trudging through the grass. You know, you saw Milotic in the water and stuff like that. And it seems like those are actually encounterable Pokemon. And so you'll see Pokemon in the open area and you'll be able to approach them and, and engage in a battle with that Pokemon, which is amazing. Now, of course, that's very similar to how things were in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which I actually ended up liking a lot more than I thought I would. Um, so that just seems great. Just That's just another element that makes these games amazing. Maybe you'll be roaming about the wild uh, area looking with your camera to find something new and you'll see a rare Pokemon in the distance and you can just, you know, maybe try to sneak up on it or maybe just run right at it, whatever helps. If they did also say that some Pokemon will pursue you in the wild while others will actually run away from you. So if it's more of like a timid Pokemon or maybe more of a rare Pokemon, if you start running straight towards it, it might actually try to run away from you. And obviously that could be a little problem if you're trying to catch a super rare or powerful Pokemon for your team and it escapes, right? So again, that adds another layer to these games that I think sounds like a lot of fun. And that, I mean, that just seems like how Pokemon would be in the real world, right? If Pokemon existed in our world, you'd be able to see them everywhere. And, and if you wanted to catch a Pokemon and you saw it from far away, you could you know, run up to it or, or sneak up on it and, and, and engage in a battle with that. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. Now in the trailers, they did also show uh, the player running through grass and an exclamation mark appeared. Now all the website says about this is that the exclamation mark that appears above the tall grass is another indicator of wild Pokemon that can battle you. That doesn't explain a lot. So I don't know if 
they have random encounters and also the open world uh, encounters where you can see Pokemon roaming around or if the exclamation marks is like I don't I, I don't know I really maybe it's like a special type of battle like you know in you know uh, what, what is it called in uh, Sun and Moon there were the SOS battles and in sixth gen we had the what was it called the team battles or you know where five Pokemon appeared at once I forgot what they're called but maybe it's something like that like maybe they've added a new battle mode for wild Pokemon and maybe that's what the exclamation mark means or again maybe it's just Maybe there are still some random encounters in addition to the non-random encounters. So let me know your thoughts on that. I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say about that in particular. Um, do you think that the games have 100% non-random encounters? Or do you think that there's a mix of non-random and random encounters? But once again, it has been effectively confirmed that you can run up to a Pokemon that you see in the wild and battle it. So in that way, you'll know what you're encountering ahead of time. So if you see a bunch of wild Zubats at night, you can try your best to avoid them. Of course, maybe Zubat would be really annoying and follow you. That would be very frustrating because of course, you know, Zubat, right? But if you really want a Zubat for your team because Crobat is actually awesome, you can, you can try to catch it, right? So just knowing what you're getting your self into with a random or with a battle in general is is something that's really useful for pokemon and again if you're just trying to get through the the wild area get to your next town to heal your pokemon or to battle the next gym leader you can try to just race right through it right now finally this is something else that is kind of a maybe this could warrant its own discussion in general but it does seem somewhat tied to the wild area and the wild Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but that is the new Rotom phone. So to keep it in line with the late 2010s, uh, which is the decade that we're in, you know, we're in the late 2010s, we're approaching 2020, you know, basically we have a very technology driven age. So to kind of keep things in line with the current technology, there is a Rotom phone. That is the new device in these games. It looks just like a smartphone, but way cooler. Like I totally, I can't wait to see people making uh, actual like phone cases that look just like this Rotom phone. But Rotom has possessed your phone and he can read all of your emails, read all of your Snapchats and, and your Instagram posts and stuff like that. A little scary, yes, but luckily Rotom seems like a good guy. He seems like he's on our side, so I don't think he'll do anything malicious with that information. But anyways, um, it does also say that the Pokédex in this game is part of your Rotom phone. So I'm thinking that your Rotom phone will, will probably have like apps. So it'll probably be like an actual smartphone these days. And there will probably be a few apps in that game. Of course, the Pokédex will be one of them, but maybe there will be some opportunity for a couple other unique apps. Like, you know, in the previous games, we've had the Pokémon Ami, which is where you can pet your Pokemon and stuff like that. So maybe we'll have something along those lines and maybe we'll have a few other modes just like Sun and Moon also had a few other modes that you can engage with. Maybe the Rotom app will allow us or the Rotom phone will allow us to do more via app. So that's also very exciting. They again have revealed very, very little information about that um, aside from just that this Rotom phone exists and that it has your Pokedex. But again, there's a lot of possibilities there. Finally, to connect all of this, in regards to the Rotom phone, it does say, and there's a picture on the website, the Rotom phone can also attach to your bike, for example, and it can make it move faster. So you can plug the Rotom phone to your into your bike somehow, and that'll make your bike go faster. It also said that it can also, the Rotom phone can also help you travel over water. Um, so I think that the Rotom phone will maybe be able to be updated or upgraded throughout the game as you progress and it'll allow you to kind of upgrade your equipment so that you can kind of travel more efficiently or more effectively that's something else that i think is very awesome now you know we had uh corviknight which is the raven pokemon that was revealed last time that is revealed to be like kind of the the taxi service of the galar region so that's kind of how you get around similar to how we had the charizard in the the Charizard ride Pokemon in Sun and Moon where if you wanted to fly to another town you you use the Charizard ride Pokemon that's kind of like what Corviknight seems like it seems like the Rotom phone is kind of like something like that where it allows you to travel more easily throughout the region stuff like that so 
that's pretty awesome too. I mean, I, I'm just super excited. Again, they did not give us too much information about this, but I feel like they gave us just enough to really heavily spec speculate about a lot of this and make predictions accordingly. I think that a lot of what I'm predict predicting is probably correct, but the bottom line here is that I am super, super excited for these games. These features alone have made me way more excited for the games, even than the Pokemon that they reveal. Now, I like a lot of the new Pokemon that they reveal, don't get me wrong, but that just goes to show how excited that this information has made me, is that I'm super excited to just play like a somewhat open world Pokemon game with just a lot of features and a huge roster of Pokemon. These games look great, I just cannot wait. I could talk about these games for hours, but I'll go ahead and cut it off right here. Please leave me your thoughts in the comments. I'm really interested in knowing what you all think about what I said, but also about all the information that they revealed about these games. I, I just really would like to know what you all think. So I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Uh, leave one down below. I'll, I'll like a few of them or heart a few of them and reply to some of them that I think are pretty intriguing as far as your theories about the wild area or just general thoughts. Uh, do you disagree with some of the things I've said? Let me know. Either way, please do leave a like as well. It does help us out a lot. And please subscribe for more Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield videos on iStarly TV. We will be making a lot more content coming up because the games are in full swing. Hope you have a good day. I'll see you next time.